A penny saved is a penny earned. Cleanliness is next to godliness. The early bird gets the worm. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. These are proverbs. Proverbs have been defined as a short sentence based on long experience. And these are rather humorous. The, these that I mentioned are, are quotes from different men, some of them from long, long ago. But the Proverbs that we want to talk about today, uh, this morning are different than these because the Proverbs that we want to examine are based on the Word of God. They are divine wisdom that comes from the mouth of God to the ears and the hearts of men to help us uh, live better and prosperous lives and to help us get along with one another. Uh, some, of the, uh, some of my favorite Proverbs and some of the more famous ones, I'll share a few of them with you, that are from the book of Proverbs. Proverbs 15.1 says, A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grieveth words stir up anger. 11.22 says that as a jewel of gold and a swine's snout, so is a fair woman which is without discretion. Uh, 14.12 says there is a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof are the ways of, de of, of death. 14.34 says that righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. 16.18 says pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. 17.6 says children's children or grandchildren are the crown of old men. 1822, whosoever findeth a wife finds a good thing and obtaineth the favor of the Lord. 1824 says, he that hath friends must show himself friendly and there is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. 20 and 1 says that wine is a mocker, strong drink is raging, whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. 2511, a word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in pictures of silver. That one's very descriptive. 271 is a caution. Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. And then one of the more famous passages from the most famous chapter in Proverbs is 3110 that says, Who can find a virtuous woman for her price? Is far above rubies. Well, the word proverb is in the Hebrew word that's in the in the Bible that we read this morning it means comparison or similar, or similar or parallel. And the Bible proverbs uh, provide for us uh, timely truths in the form of a simple illustration or a short statement. These uh, proverbs in the Bible are simple, simple and moral statements that highlight and teach some fundamental realities about life. A man named Wilkinson said that Proverbs is the most intensely practical book in the Old Testament because it teaches skillful living in multiple aspects of everyday life. In the book of Proverbs, you'll find teachings and contrasts about wisdom and folly, the righteous and the wicked, uh, pride and humility, the tongue, justice and vengeance, the family, laziness and work, poverty and wealth, friends and neighbors, love and lust, anger and strife, masters and servants, and life and death. The Proverbs teach us about relationships with ourselves, with God, with our families, and with our neighbors. Three times in the book of Proverbs, it calls them the Proverbs of Solomon. And Solomon is recognized as the primary author of the book. Uh, Solomon was the uh, third king of Israel, the son of David. Uh, it tells us in uh, chapter 25 and verse 1 about the servants of Hezekiah. Hezekiah was a later king, and they helped compile and organize the Proverbs, and so the actual final collection of Proverbs was finished by Hezekiah and his assistants around 700 BC. Uh, two, uh, the last two of the Proverbs, uh, chapter 31, was 
tells us was written by a man named Agur. And chapter 31, that's mostly about the virtuous woman, was, is attributed to Lemuel, who some people think Lemuel was just another name for Solomon. Uh, Proverbs is part of what we call the wisdom literature section of the Bible. It includes uh, Job and Proverbs and Ecclesiastes. Uh, it, it, uh, it is a handbook to provide wisdom to apply, uh, that we can apply to different situations in, in life that can help us deal with a lot of situations and a lot of problems. And not foolish things, not stupid things, not harmful and dangerous things. In Ephesians 5.15, God's word warns us to walk circumspectly or carefully in this world. Not as fools, but as wise people. And so we need the wisdom. And that's what Proverbs is about. It's about wisdom. Or how, it tells us how to be a wise guy. Now, normally being a wise guy will get you in trouble. But in this, in this respect, how to be a wise person, how to make wise choices, how to do wise things. That's what we want to talk about this morning. And now I'll read our text. Uh, it's in chapter four. And if you would, in honor to God's word, stand with me and, let's, and follow along as we read. Chapter four and verse one. Hear ye children, the instruction of a father, attend to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine, forsake you not my law. For I was my father's son, tender and beloved in the sight of my mother. He taught me also and said unto me, Let thy heart retain my words, keep my commandments and live. Get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my, of my mouth. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her and she shall keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. Exalt her, and she shall pro uh, promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor when thou dost embrace her. She shall give to thy head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory shall she deliver uh, to thee. So you could be seated. We want to talk uh, uh, this morning about, uh, from the book of Proverbs, about wisdom. Wisdom. What is wisdom? What does wisdom mean? Well, a fellow named Lewis Timberlake says that uh, wisdom is not intelligence. Wisdom is not a high IQ. There are people, some people who have very, are very educated people and have very high IQs and have a lot of knowledge who are not very wise. But he says that wisdom is the best use of knowledge. Biblical wisdom is knowing and understanding and living out the word of God in your life. That's who a wise person is, who studies God's word and knows God's word and believes God's word and lives according to God's word. That's who a wise person is. And that's what a wise person does. Another man uh, named Wearsby tells us that to the ancient Jew, wisdom was much more than simply giving good advice or successful planning, but that wisdom means skillful and success, being skillful and successful in one's relationships and responsibilities and observing our Creator's uh, commands in, in our, uh, in moral, in our uh, responsibilities and in our relationships. People who have wisdom have, uh, have the skill to face life honestly and courageously and to manage it successfully so that God's purposes are fulfilled in their lives. Uh, a man named J.I. Uh, Packer says that wisdom is the power to see, the inclination to choose, uh, the, uh, the best and highest goal together with the surest means of attaining it. Wisdom is the practical side of moral goodness. Many times in, in the Bible... Many times in Proverbs, wisdom and knowledge 
are, are spoken of together because uh, wisdom cannot exist without knowledge. You, can, uh, you can't have wisdom without knowledge. But you can't have knowledge but without wisdom. Let me say that again. You can't have wisdom without knowledge. But you can't have knowledge without wisdom. And that's important. So wisdom basically is the capacity and the willingness and the determination to do the right thing. And to, uh, to do things God's way in every situation, in every aspect of your life. Some people say, well, I don't let my religion uh, affect uh, how I do things or uh, how I do my job or whatever. Well, that's not the way God intended for religion to be. God intended for our religion to affect every aspect in every part of our lives. And that's what wisdom is, is learning God's word and believing God's word and practicing God's word in every relationship and every situation in your life. How do we get that wisdom? What's the source of wisdom? Well, the scripture reminds us that that God is all wise or he's all knowing or he's omniscient. And so uh, the way to get knowledge and wisdom is to get it from somebody who's got it already, who can share it with you. Uh, Job said that with God is wisdom and strength and he has counsel and understanding. In Proverbs 2 and 6 it says that the Lord giveth wisdom and out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. In chapter 9 verse 10 he, says, he tells us that the fear of the Lord, that is a, a, an, a, a reverential respect uh, for God. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Uh, and knowledge and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Uh, we're not naturally born with that wisdom. It comes from God. James said, James 1, 5, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God who giveth to all men liberally. And upbraideth not, God loves to give wisdom to, to his children. He loves to disperse the information and the wisdom that we need to live the kind of lives that he wants us to live. King Solomon, who wrote many of these proverbs, uh, was a young man when he succeeded his father David to the throne of Israel. And God appeared to him in a dream and said to him, Solomon, ask me what you want and I'll give it to you. And Solomon uh, showed that he already had a great deal of wisdom in the request that he made. He said, to God, basically, he said, I'm a young man. I'm about to become the king of your people, the leader of your people. And he said, I don't know what to do. And he said, I pray that you would give me wisdom, that I could be a good person, that I could be a good king, that I could be a good leader for your people. And the Bible says that his request pleased God. And God said to him, you could have asked for wealth or riches or fame. He said, but because you've asked for wisdom, I'm going to give you these other things too. And so the scripture tells us that God gave Solomon the wisdom that made him the wisest um, man of his day. Perhaps the wisest man who has ever lived. But God also gave him fame and wealth to go along with it. So Solomon, the man that God used to write most of these proverbs, was himself a wise man. And the way he became a wise man is he asked God for wisdom. He was smart enough, wise enough to know that he did not know all the answers and to know that he needed help. And so his wisdom came from, wisdom comes from God. Wisdom comes from the word of God. That's why we're reading Proverbs today. And that's why I bring this Bible to the pulpit every Sunday because I'm not smart enough or wise enough uh, to tell you just from my experience and my knowledge, the things you need to know, you need to know God's word. Because that's where wisdom comes from. And Psalm, the psalmist said in 119, Thou through thy commandments has made me wiser than my enemies, for they're ever with me. This book, the knowledge of this book is what makes us wise. Wisdom can come from other wise people. 
from, uh, uh, from godly people. In Proverbs 13 and 20, he said, he, who, uh, he that walks with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. We have a saying that says, birds of a, of a feather flock together. That's another proverb. That's not in the Bible either. But, but it's why it's true. And some of you young people, you're concerned because your parents want to know who your friends are and, and what they're like and where you're going and, and all about that. You think, well, you know, some kids think, well, why do they need to know that? Well, it's because you become, for the most part, you become the kind of people that you hang out with. And he said here that the companion, he that walks with wise men will become wise. So it's really important that your friends, the people that you really like to spend most of your time with and do things with, that they are wise people. That they are people who are going to make good choices, who are going to try to uh, uh, honor God, who are going to try to treat other people right. It will save you a whole lot of trouble if you will spend time with wise people instead of with foolish people. Uh, Proverbs 13.1 says that a, a, son, a wise son hears his father's instruction, but a scorner uh, hears, not, hears not rebuke. And so it's wise to have wise friends, and it's wise to listen to what your parents tell you, because they may not know everything, and sometimes they make mistakes too. But, if, uh, but probably the years of experience and uh, mistakes they have made have taught them some things that they can pass on to you and help you be wise too. So the wisdom comes from God. It comes from the word of God. It comes from other wise people who have been there and done that already. What are the products of wisdom? Wisdom will make a difference in your life if you learn it and you pursue it and you practice it. This wisdom produces obedience to God. Jesus preached the Sermon on the Mount in uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7. And that's the most powerful sermon that's, I think, ever been preached, the most beautiful sermon ever been preached. And at the end of it, he, his conclusion was this. He said, uh, whosoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, he will be a wise man. And so wisdom doesn't, just, just knowing the word of God and just reading the word of God doesn't make you wise. But Jesus said the wise man is the person who hears my words and he knows my words and he does them. So wisdom produces obedience to God. It's uh, if you're not obeying what God tells you to do, you're not a wise person. That's a foolish thing to do. Wisdom produces happiness. In 3.13 of Proverbs it says, Happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that gets understanding. It's very frustrating trying to figure out what to do in all of life's situations. And what a, what a, a happy thing it is when you study the Word of God, you know the Word of God, and the Spirit of God lives in you, and you seek direction, and He gives it to you. Uh, and you, you, know, you know what to do, because God has revealed it to you. He showed it to you. Wisdom gives happiness. Wisdom produces wealth. Now, with, uh, not necessarily in uh, money in the bank, but listen to what he says. He says in Proverbs 8, 11, wisdom is better than rubies and all the things that they uh, that may be desired are not to be compared to it. 8, 19, he says my uh, wisdom is, is personified here and wisdom is saying my fruit is better than gold, than fine gold. My revenues better than choice silver. 13, 17 says there is a man that makes himself rich yet has nothing. And there is he that makes himself poor, yet have great riches. You can't measure wealth and poverty just in dollar signs or just in the stock market or those things. But he, he says that wisdom, if you have wisdom, that makes you wealthy uh, in more ways than dollars and jewels 
can make you wealthy. Wisdom produces life and health. In chapter 4, he says, My son, attend to my words, incline thy ear to my sayings. Let them not depart from thy eyes. Keep them in the midst of thy heart, for they are life unto those that find them, and they are health to the flesh. Now, in, in the book of Proverbs, there are warnings against things that are dangerous to life, that uh, are dangerous to our good health. He tells us in, in Proverbs, he, tell, he warns us about uh, the dangers of alcohol, the results of adultery. Uh, he warns us about fighting and laziness and lawbreaking. All these things are there. And uh, avoiding these things makes us healthy and gives us better life. Wisdom gives us direction to show us what to do in the difficult decisions that we have to make. My favorite proverb is chapter 3, verse 5 and 6, where he says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. So he says, if you trust in the Lord, he will give you direction. That's what wisdom does. It helps you know what to do with the decisions you have to make in life. Wisdom gives peace. In 317, her ways are the ways of pleasantness and all her paths are peace. It gives you peace with God. As sinners, we're at war with God. But when we come to recognize that we are sinners, and that through Christ we can have forgiveness of our sins. That makes us have peace with God. In, in 9 and 10 it says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Uh, it, wisdom gives us peace with our spouse. There are repeated warnings here in the book of Proverbs against adultery. He talks uh, repeatedly about, the stra about strange women. And strange women are loose living women who try to prey upon uh, 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 on, uh, on men and, and to have affairs with them. There are repeated warnings against that. There are warnings against uh, careless women who are, uh, who are disrespectful to their families and to their husbands and, and st instead of uh, trying to make peace at home, try to stir up trouble. He says in uh, 12 and 4, a virtuous woman is a crown to her husband. But she that maketh ashamed is rottenness to his bones. In 14.1 it says that every wise woman builds her house, but the foolish plucketh it down with her hands. A wise woman is a home builder, not a home wrecker. He, uh, he talks to us about how to have uh, peace with your parents. In 14.1, hear ye children the instruction of a father. In 10 to no understanding. So he said, you know, it would prevent a lot of problems at home if children would just listen to their parents and obey their parents even if they don't agree with what they're saying. It, provide, it promotes peace. Uh, Proverbs 10.1 says, A wise son makes a, a glad father, but a foolish son is heaviness to his mother. So if you... If children would have wisdom and know wisdom and display wisdom, it'd sure make it easier for the parents to get along with them, wouldn't it? Uh, and likewise, the parents would be wise. It'd make it easier for their children to get along with them. Uh, it, it, wisdom promotes peace with your children. 22.6 says, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he's old, he won't depart from it. It, wisdom provides peace with your neighbors. I like this one, 25, 17. says, withdraw thy foot from thy neighbor's house, lest he be weary of thee and hate thee. And the way I learned that was, don't overstay your welcome. Uh, and if you can uh, follow that, that makes it easier to get along with your neighbors. Don't be uh, a pain and a pest. And uh, don't overstay your welcome. So we have kind of hit... The highlights of Proverbs. And I would encourage you to go back and read through this. I've read through it several times the last few days. There are 31 Proverbs. Uh, some months have 31 days. Some people I know make it a practice 
to read one of the Proverbs every day uh, and do that to, to the month and then start over at the next month, start over at the beginning of it again. Because these are our wise sayings that come from God to help us have knowledge and understanding, to help us uh, get along with one another, and to help us make choices that will bring God's blessing instead of his rebuke. Are you tired? Let me ask you, are you tired of making mistakes in your life? Well, all of us are going to make mistakes. And these Proverbs, they are, now admittedly, they are generalities. They are not absolute promises. They don't work out this way for everybody every time. But they general, they're generalities. Generally, they work out that way. For instance, you know, a, you say a soft answer turns away wrath. I've known some people that their anger and their temper was so bad, they were going to fight regardless of how softly you replied to them. So it doesn't work all the time, but most of the time it does. But... Uh, if you're tired of making mistakes, it says that, that wisdom begins with the fear of the Lord, with a reverential respect of God. And, part, and that begins with trusting Jesus as your Savior. The scripture tells us in Ephesians chapter 1 that in Jesus abounds all wisdom. Uh, wisdom, he is uh, the embodiment of wisdom. And wisdom comes from him. And the wisest choice anybody, the wisest decision anybody will ever make is if they put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ as their Savior. The fo most foolish choice anybody would make would be to reject him and refuse him. And then after you do that, begin to ask God for instruction and direction in your life. We, uh, we really realize that we don't have all the answers and and we need, uh, we, we search for advice from other people. And that can be helpful too. But ask God for his instruction and his direction in your life. Read and study God's word. Here's our handbook. Not just Proverbs, but the whole thing. Here's our handbook uh, for life and to make the right choices and to do the right things. And it uh, doing so will avoid a whole lot of trouble and bring a lot of blessing and obey what God's word says and obey what God's spirit tells you. And that will make you a wise guy. That will make you a wise person. We're going to have enough problems in life as it is without doing foolish things and without doing, uh, making bad choices and without doing stupid things. We can avoid a lot of that just by having the wisdom that comes from God and comes to his word. And I hope that uh, all of you would choose to be wise and fearing God and believing God and honoring his word and obeying him and, and doing what he says. Just let's stand and we're going to sing together this morning.